Earth spinning around the sun produced the first drama, Death in Winter, Rebirth in Spring. The word drama means a thing done. The worshippers of Dionysus went to the theatre to get something done, not just for entertainment. To ask for more sun, more rain, more fish out of the sea. Or to be made the victors in a coming battle. Or to be made healthy, holy, immortal, and or successful in love. And or to win the favour of the powerful gods in the unending battle to survive against those gods with malice toward man. Concerned with violence. Something threatens life violently, and life fights to survive and win. In the things done against the threat, in the things done in the will to live, that is drama. Bruises, contusions, lacerations, broken bones. Certainly a concussion, possibly a skull fracture. Shock. This man that hit him is in shock too. I took his pulse before. I thought he was going to have a coronary. I got him sedated. Try to get one of the men to drive him home. Bud! Bud! Bud, take this man home. Drive him home in his own car and make your own arrangements for getting back to the precinct. Tell him when he feels better. I want him to drop by my office to give us a statement. The one who did the stabbing was dressed like a sailor. He dressed like... He does no. partially dress like a sailor. He Russian. had a little jacket yeah. and he was wearing sneakers. Yeah, well... Yeah, a sneaker. All right, no, it's, it's, he was wearing sneakers. But well, was he a sailor or wasn't he a no, sailor? No, he was not a sailor. Well, well, he was dressed like a sailor. All right. I know he's not a sailor. Sure, he's not a sailor. All right, just hold it. All right. Now, they're at the table. The one who gets stabbed is sitting here. Right. And the other fellow standing here where I am. Right. All right. Then he stabs. Then what happens? He runs away. The fellow who does the stabbing runs away. No, no. The other one. The man who got stabbed. See, he bends over holding his stomach like this and he runs. The man who gets stabbed? He runs that way. And then I turn back to where the guy is who uh, stabbed him. Yeah? What's he doing? He's just standing there with a knife in his hand. I listen to everybody very carefully. I'm... I'm all mixed up. Well, what's bugging you? The wrong guy ran away. How could the stabber plan in advance that a guy was going to get hit by a car and cover his escape? Yeah, there was no blood from the wound. Well, maybe you missed some little drops. Yeah? Go look for yourself. No, no blood. But there was a stabbing. Well, that's what they all agree on. There was a stabbing. That's right, Mike. Blood or no blood. This man was hurt. He was holding his stomach. Now, he's going to have to have a doctor or a hospital. Circulate his description. Keep checking the hospitals. Yes, sir. Uh, early 20s. Medium height. Medium build. Dark hair. Brown eyes. Tan jacket. And a black turtleneck sweater. Huh? That's right. All right. Let me. 
And Adam, this is Ken Olson. Hello, Ken. Mr. Flint? I, I came to turn myself in. What did you do? Well, I, I couldn't find out, but I, I, I was asking. That man that was run over? The one where there was supposed to be a stabbing? Well, is he all right? Supposed to be? Frank. Ken, sit down here a minute, will you? Yeah. Pardon me. How do you know him? He's in my acting class. Well, he knows I go with you. It's, it's classroom gossip that I, I go with the detective. Anyway, he came to class this morning, and I thought he was going up in smoke. He, he got there about five minutes before the class ended, and, well, he waited for me, and he, he asked me to have coffee with him, and then he asked me to intercede with you. No, no, honey, I didn't want to hear from you. I want to hear from him. Yes, but I, I don't think he's going to talk to you. What? Well, I was going to plead for him. Why? Because he's a decent boy. Mike? Yeah? There's something interesting out here. This is Lieutenant Parker, Ken Elson. Ken, would you like to tell us now? I think it was my fault that that man got hit this morning. We got into this argument. What argument? I don't even know how it started. We just got into hollering at each other. Who's we? My roommate. I, I had a cup of coffee in one hand and a, a script in the other. What's your roommate's name? Neil. I was trying to get my lines down for this scene. Neil who? Neil McCaw. All right, you were trying to get your lines down for the scene. Well, he kept watching me. Just sitting there watching me. So finally I got mad and I said, what are you looking at? He just kept sitting there looking at me and grinning. And I got madder and madder. What's the matter? Well, what difference does it make? We had this argument anyway. He said that an actor was nothing without a, a script and a stage. And an audience that was ready to go along with it. I said that an actor could do anything anywhere. It's just one thing after another. And well, finally I got so mad that I, that I said I could do a scene on the street with strangers watching me. And that, that, they, that they would believe me. Oh, we, we better buck on it. Mr. McCall was the other actor in the scene, huh? The both of us. Where do you and Mr. McCall live? Where do you live? Libby, do you know where they live? 108 Kerry Street. What apartment? 3B. This is a world in which you have to live with other people. An act committed in a public place has repercussions. Now, how old do you have to be to know about that? You think it's enough not to have malicious intent at the time of the action? Don't you think you should have a sense of responsibility towards all the other people in the world in which you live? I can't arrest you for moral responsibility for what happened to that man who was hit by the car today. But in my mind, you are both guilty. But I can't act by the opinions in my mind. I have to act by the opinions of the law. I'm sorry, sir. And you? You've got nothing to say, huh? The man panicked and ran. He got run over. Anything could have panicked him. A cat screaming or... Or a flower pot falling off a window ledge. 
What's it got to do with me? I wish that I could transfer my anger to you, my frustration. If I could do that, that would be punishment enough for you. I have a tendency to file a thousand charges against you. Vagrancy, malicious mischief, performing in public without a license, carrying concealed and deadly weapons. But what stops me? I don't want to twist the law to my own personal selfish needs. Get him out of here. Yes, sir. Come on. I'm sorry, sir. Make out the report. Fill out the form to confiscate the knife. And turn it over to the property custodian. Yes, sir. It's all right, Lib. We send him home. What's the matter with you and Mike and Frank? We're policemen. A crime's just been committed. We can't do anything about it. Come have lunch with me, huh? How goes the world? All the world's a stage and we but petty players. <laughs> hey, sit down. I'll be with you in a minute. Huh? Okay. Hi, Lab. Hi, Jess. How's it going? How's it going? I'm meeting, aren't I? something interesting? Those two fellas are actors. The counterman is probably the only one of his friends who's working. So he feeds them. Did you happen to notice what that fellow had to eat? He'll probably get a check for a cup of coffee. And probably only has a quarter on him, so... What he'll do is he'll take 15 cents and leave it as a tip and pay his check with the other dime. That's actors. You own this place? I would. I know how much food this man has had to eat and all you have listed here is coffee for 10 cents. You know that that's petty larceny? Adam, please, I know this boy. He doesn't have any money. I, I don't care. He doesn't have any right to give people's property away. Adam, how long has it been since you've had a full meal, Jess? I make out the right check and put down everything the man has had to eat. You think I like this? Come on, make out the right check and put down everything he's had to eat. I, I don't have any money to pay. Hey, pal, you better do what I tell you to. Adam, please. You say they're actors, and that excuses them. Well, I'm a policeman, and I'm doing what a policeman has to do. Goodbye. Is there anything the matter? No, no, everything's okay. I just thought there was something wrong with his check, but he's re-added it, and it's fine now. Can I pay you? Different. No, that's not necessary. People change, you know. 
uh, without anybody doing very much against them. I feel very sad to hear you feel so different. I guess the reason I don't want to see you anymore is because you're not really what I thought you were. I mean, I thought you were uh, a kind of intelligent person, but you don't even like to go to the concert with me. Oh, you mean you're not satisfied with me as a person then? What? Where are you two? What are you? You. You know what he just said to you? He said, you stink. How do you react to that? Oh, then you mean you don't like me anymore as a person. That's what you say to someone who tells you you stink. All right. What do you feel? Are you alive? Do you have any feelings? Where are you? Right here. If you're looking for an actor, I'm here. What do you want, Jim? You're not a member of this class. I am now. You don't belong here. Please leave. I belong. I belong better than those two over there. And I'm paid up. Courtesy of Ken Ellison. Paid up for the next three months. Free ride? Huh? Oh, um, Mr. Ellison had to leave suddenly for the Hoosier State of Indiana. Endowing me with all his earthly goods. Including one month's rent in advance on an apartment. And three months paid up here. What's your name? Neil McCaw. What have you done? I've stayed alive. Where have you acted? All over. Places you've never been. When I was eight years old, I stood on my head on the back of an elephant. In a parade. I was a clown when I was ten. I was Moses in a pageant about the Red Sea. I walked into the water until the water closed over my head. I didn't know how to swim. How would you like to walk into the water acting like you could swim? I acted being a shill in a carnival for about five years. I know how to juggle. I can be a clown. I act on street corners. Come on, off the stage. It's all right, Marsha. Sit down. Get over there. What's over there? That's a cage. Go on, get in. What are you doing in a cage? I don't belong here. Prove it! I talk. 
It's an animal talk. You listen to them watching you. You know their language. You're still an animal. I'm not an animal. Oh. I'm not an animal! We can't let you out. We couldn't trust you. You're too savage. Oh, no. no. Gentle now. All right. There's a lock on that door. If you're a man, you have hands. You can open that lock. It's not even locked with the key. If you're a man, open it. So long. Can't even use my hands. Oh, you're still an animal. And an animal cry. send you up on jobs that you're qualified for. You can't just turn those jobs down. Now, you've heard that before, haven't you? Don't make waves. Now, look, we do what we can. We've sent you up on four different jobs, and you've just refused to go to them. Now, under the law, you're not entitled to compensation in such a case. I'm an actor. Mr. McCoy, you say you're an actor. That doesn't make you an actor. I've studied acting for three months. I've earned a hundred bucks on television acting. That makes me a professional actor. Now look, don't try to tell the government what you are. You're an usher, a truck driver, a carnival worker, and a veterinarian's assistant. Now you refuse jobs in all those fields, that means you're ineligible for unemployment compensation. Next. Now listen, Mr. McCall. If you want to qualify for unemployment compensation, we send you up on a job that you're qualified for, one that's in your category. You can't just turn it down. Sorry, Neil. It's my scene today, Marcia. I'm sorry, Neil. I told you yesterday was your last day of grace. Marcia, I can't raise the money. Then you can't come in. 
It's my scene. There's nothing personal oh, about... Oh, come on, Marcia. It's purely a business... I just need a little more time. You have all the time you want. Just don't come to class. That's I'm not right. leaving. Now, Neil, don't make a scene. Do you think you're going to move me by making a scene? You want me to get on my knees to you? Is that what you want? I couldn't care less. I just want to work, Marcia. That's all I want to do. Now, Neil, there is a class going on in here. Let's go outside and discuss this quietly. All right, class, let's begin. All right, let's go, let's go. What do you want to do this for? What do you get out of it? You want I us to start now, Mr. Bergson? You have no right to do this. All right. You're Pretty hard to work against that. Class. All right, just ignore it. It's nothing to do with you. It's none of your business. I refuse to discuss this. Ladies and gentlemen, as you can you see by the furniture, you this room in which I stand is located geographically in London, yes. England, and temporarily, temporarily I stand in the year 1930. Figuring out what I'm sorry, I'm up on my line. Well, concentrate! Force everything else out of your mouth. You can't act, and you're ugly. I'm warning you. Come on, he wouldn't come near you. Arm to let you stay on on the class on scholarship. That's easy. It's not as easy as you think. You think I want a free ride? You think I didn't try to find the money elsewhere? I didn't come here to talk to you about money. Marsha talks about money. I talk about talent. I love your talent. Then let me back in your class. I can't. I ate garbage to become an actor. I stood in soup lines. I scrubbed floors on my hands and knees for a tailor so that when I walked in for a reading, I was neat and clean. What do you want? Pity? Help me. Help yourself. It took me three and a half years before I got my first professional acting job. I'll do anything. But do it then. Do it. Do it! Don't come crawling to me. You know who you are. What do you mean coming to me? You can do things now that I couldn't do after 10 years of acting. You got a freedom that I never had in the best performance I ever gave. You ask me for pity. You ask me for charity. You're an actor! I'm only a man that knows how to act. How to act. What people should do in order to act well. And I can't. My head knows, my soul knows, my body's trained, but I can't. You want to know about work? I got a part in the play. I practice for hours picking up a cup because I'm clumsy. I work for days, day after day, over and over again, trying to pick out a line reading, doing it with my head, because I never had the freedom to just be when I was standing on a stage. I'm a triumph of celebration and intellect. And you ask me for charity. You want charity? Okay. You come to my house, I'll feed you. You want clothes on your back? I'll put clothes on your back. But I won't teach you for nothing. You think I don't know where to go for food? You me be crying in the corridors. What right? You want to know something? I envy you. I envy you. And now you're going to throw it all away for food and clothing and a roof over your head. Well, go sell your talent then. I want to be in your class. I want to be in your class. Yeah, take it. You could pay class by class. She'll take $10, you should take $50. 
All right, you got ten dollars. Use it. Buy food, take a girl out, or come to class tomorrow. Whatever you want, whatever you want. I've got that school, and that's all I've got. That's all I've got left of acting now, is to teach. You want me to give it to you? No matter how much talent you've got. What did I ask for? To come into a class and sit and learn? You got 50 students in your class. So one of them doesn't pay. What's the difference? Okay, so you got hundreds of dollars in your pocket. You give me 10, you won't miss it. What do you want from me? Gratitude? You're a phony. You're nothing. You don't know about acting, and you don't know about human feelings. You stay. I didn't need him. Well, look, I, um, <clears throat> I've got uh, uh, some money. I'll lend you some, okay? Fat. I... I could use some company. Come to lunch with me? Okay. This is the scene you want to do? I was eight years old. Every night at 10 or 11 minutes after nine, the man my mother was in love with fired six bullets at my father. My father was a magician, and my mother was an enchanted princess. She had nothing to do except to stand beautifully while my father caught bullets in his teeth. The first two bullets were always real. They went into the six-inch thick wood plank beside my father's head, splintering the wood. This was always the dangerous time, because the man was in love with my mother, and for a long time he wanted my father to be dead. But the next four bullets were magic, and my father caught them in his teeth. Because he caught bullets in his teeth, my father knew that he could never shoot himself. Instead, he... Instead, he put... Later, my mother and I came home from the movies. We found my father there. see his face through the transparency of the plastic bag. His eyes were closed. Having left their bed and board by death and otherwise, I am not responsible for their debts. And the room was filled with white doves from his magic hat, and they flew from one wall to another. giving us anything very tangible to work on. I know, Mike. 
But it's not just one thing, it's a lot of different things. I wish you could have been there when he was following Mr. Bergson down the street, screaming at him. I've never seen anything like it. And then when we went across to the bar, he was so peaceful in himself. That was so frightening. And that scene, that wasn't something he just made up. That was something out of his own life. He was talking about the death of his father. And then, when the check came and he shoved it over to me, he said, I need all my money to buy one more class. And I got the feeling that he decided to go to one more class while he was talking about the death of his father. And somehow, I, I got the feeling that we were also talking about Mr. Bergson's death. Well, Liv, what you say adds up to kid's psychotic. You're not a psychiatrist. Then you think it's going to happen in class this morning, huh? He had ten dollars. That's enough to buy one more class. What do you think, Adam? Well, I... I just saw him do a scene once. Of course, it was only acting, but uh, I think he was out of control then. Well, Libby, do you want to make a formal complaint? Do you want us to go down there and take official police action? I'm just scared. Why don't you take the morning off and go down with Libby and sit in on some of those classes, huh? Okay. my scene today. I'm sorry your scene was yesterday and you weren't here yesterday. I wasn't here? I wasn't here because of, because of circumstances beyond my control. But I'm here now. And I'm ready to do my scene. Now. It's all right with me. I'll wait. I'm going to need some help. I couldn't find anybody to work with me. Well, in that case, you're not prepared. Please sit down. Mr. Blackstone. Sit down! If your scene needs more than one person, you've only got yourself. What are you going to do? I thought maybe you'd... you'd act with me. And this Cormac here. I don't act with students. This is my last session. I thought you'd... I'm sorry. I paid my last ten bucks for this class, Mr. Bergson. How oh, do you? And you think that entitles you to act to the teacher, huh? It would be a big help. The last ten bucks. Yeah, that's a lot of money. The last ten bucks. Sure, you could have used it for a lot of other things. Food, clothing, uh, perhaps even amusement. But you chose to bring it here to put it in my pocket. Because you admire my talent as a teacher. I'm touched, Mr. McCaw. I'm flattered. Let me see your thing. What part do I play? The magician. Oh, I uh, catch bullets in my teeth. Hmm? If you can. Uh, you want to act, Marshal? You'll be the magician's assistant. All you have to do is stand on the stage and be beautiful. Right, McCaw? Marsha accepts. 
She too is flattered. I'll, uh, I'll need some props. A few cloaks and a pistol. I'm sure you can get anything you want in the prop room. Marshal, take him along and give him anything he wants. Six of those. Yeah, I see that. They're only blanks. I'll give this to you when you're ready to go on stage. Every night, at 11 or 12 minutes after 9, we come here to do our act. That is the magician. And this beautiful lady here is his wife. She does not love him. Every night, at 11 or 12 minutes after 9, she takes a gun and hands it to her lover. The gun. One thing I must make clear. All his magic is fake. It is all done with tricks. We use only fake bullets because the people here are fake people. Now, I want to ask you something. I want to ask you to die. Don't make me expose you. No, I decided long ago that I would continue to exist. What do you call existence? Running away from people that need you? Well, you're not here anyway. You might as well be dead. <laughs> what do you have to live for? A magician. Do you really think you can fool the people with your tricks? Do you think they believe you're an actor, Mr. Bergson? This lesson is over. The lesson's just beginning. Let's take you. Just what is it he gives you? All right, McCall. You've had your ten dollars. Watch out. Maybe this one's loaded. Who are you? You think because you have youth and arrogance and talent 
That's the price of the whole world. You think people should just lie down and die because you want them to? I don't ask them to die. They have a right to live. Not if they're too scared to live! Somebody kisses your wife, magician. What do you do? You have no talent. And those who know you deeply have no respect for you. You know that? The only thing that holds you together is envy. Envy for those who come here with talent. And every night you die. For in the act of their acting, they get born. They're only blanks. It's fake magic. It's not dying, it's faking. Leave the boy alone. I'm not shot. It's his heart. Get an ambulance. Frank. one of these days. Oh, well, he's gone. Well, what am I supposed to do about you? Talk to him? But you were gone. All those white doves. Going all around the room, banging into the walls. Looking for a way out.
There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. Screen Gems film presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.